Well, this doesn't have to be perfectly half inch, but it'd be nice. Okay, that's important. Line sharp there. Take a little bit more. Space. I want to take the nice to the main surface. I'm going to be very free. Right corner. The other turn down. Switching is over. Let's get the other end. I'm still over. Yeah, 501. That's okay. Just one way. Start doing operations. So know that switch piece is going to be going with that recent 5 diameter that we're going to turn the shoulder to. And it's okay to start diving the hole for the 2 6 operation. This one's 5 to first. This one's 5. Set. I know I'm going to have a little bit of 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 a we're going to have an inch. I'm going to see a lot of drill. I'll interfere with that about this. That was right there. Let's go out. We think it's going to back. Get a feel for that diameter. It's a little over. Yeah, 501. That's okay. So we know that the spacer piece is going to be going over that 375 diameter that we're going to turn the shoulder to. And it's okay to go ahead and start by drilling the hole for the 236 operation. Sit. I'm not seeing a lot of drift on the drill. All of the materials mad about this. Got most of our depth there. Take this drill out. All right, so we have our pin gauge set out, and we know that um, we know that 236 is our high. So 236 pin doesn't want to go. Let's try our 232. 232 is not wanting to go. 231. 231 pin is kind of not bad. It's about a 231 goes. So 231 goes, 232 doesn't, which means we have five thousandths to take out of this particular hole. Here's my uh, pin gauge set that I use. It's just a reference pin gauge set. It is complete from 0 0.061 to 250. That's all I've got. And <laughs> It was already marked red when I got it. I haven't cleaned them all up, but they work well, and um, they're good for reference. I, I don't have a, it's one of the better ways to check a hole than just jamming a pair of calipers in there. It's, you got the uh, 231 pin here. Got a nice hole. And then the 232 is not wanting to go into that hole. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, if I force it. It'll start. The danger with using any kind of import drill is that they can cut oversize. And so this one I felt comfortable with trying this on and we ended up in good shape. Let me uh, set these off to the side. And we'll try to come up with a boring solution. So I, I have this little boring bar right here. And I think it's going to work. Um, I'll go over to the grinder and I'll dress these edges up a little bit. See if I can improve that a little bit. But this one will go into this hole and give me just a little bit of clearance. I'll show you how I set these up in a second. 
with those big old long screws on there. Not the best in the world, right? But um, these these screws and these holders, they were I bought them a long time ago, and I really I really like them, but I never like the screws in them at all. This is what I get. I'll replace them with good cap screws later on. So now we have a boring bar like setup, almost a Bokum style boring bar. Here's what we're going to do this should be loose, and that's going to float. So I'm going to get up close. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start to bring this in. Okay. So I have the tool going into the hole, and I don't think I actually have enough of the enough tool here to do this with this particular style. One thing you can do is if you have a let's let's do this. Let's Let's have a little fun with this. So, in this particular case, I have a tool where the cutter is relatively close to center on the, on the rotational axis of the tool itself. So what I mean is that this tool is more in the center line of this entire piece. So if I took um, you want to use roughly the same diameter shank is your tool so that it does work this one doesn't match up so this tool ooh, this tool right here doesn't have the right shank size but this body is the, is the correct size so if I put the body in the tool with two of the cutting edges uh, vertically then I can come in and I can hunt for that height That's the height I want this tool at. Then I can close it down, back this out, take the tool that I was aligning the height with, and then get my original tool back in. Just a different way to set the center of a tool. And uh, tools can be, they can be high and low as long as their orientation is is correct and, and that can change how your cut comes out give this a little more space we'll take a look I got a little headlamp on I can't even get in there with my magnifying piece Looks to me like it's too low. Yep. Tool is too low right now. I see. It's angled down a little bit than what I had anticipated compared to the other tool. Now we have our tool relatively aligned. Let's see if when we get in there what it's doing. it started to rub back here on this part let's see what that looks like though I want to get the 233 pin the goal here is to get the 233 pin to go in starting so I'm using the 
compound cross slide. I'm set at 45 degrees. So I can make smaller motions on this axis than I can on the other. It's almost acting as if it's set up too high right now. That's the problem with this. See, that's too loose now. And I'm gonna I'm gonna change over to a slightly different bar, I think. I have this one to try. I'll have to foots with this one to really get it lined up. This is a much smaller diameter tool. Get a color mark inside of there. Okay, we've taken off the blue line. That's really hard to see now. Let me uh let me move you guys. Yeah, and all the futzing around with the boring bar 237 pin goes. So we've got a thousandths clearance over the shaft right now. The 238 pin will go. So we're a little larger than what it needs to be. I think that's acceptable. I'm not going to try to remake this guy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the shoulder down to 375 uh, minus 1 at the most, and we're going to take it back 100 thousandths. So we're going to check both our depth and our diameter roughly. There is a slight burr on the front of the part. So right now we're 70,000 and I need to go 30 more.
I've never had that happen. My uh, hand wheel's not engaging anymore. I, I lubed it up, but I don't know what the heck is happening. It's just not turning anymore. Like I must have sheared something. Oh no. Everything was working great. What what has happened? It's not even engaging. With the gear, I can feel the gear underneath the rack. It engages with the gears, but this just will not, uh, it's not driving the other thing. I wonder if a pin's fallen out from inside of there. I can't even, <clears throat> I can't even push the thing. What in the hell? The lock is loose. I'll, I'll bring you back. I don't know what's going on.